Oh, hey folks, um, today is a, another episode on that Mystery Casey 1000 project. Uh, somebody did guess what it is in the comments, uh, just based on the first video, even though they hadn't seen the fairing. Uh, what I am building is a replica of the goose bike from the movie Mad Max, the, the 1970 movie, 1979 movie Mad Max. Uh, the goose is the motorcycle cop with the short haircut, blonde hair. And the bike is only shown for a couple of minutes here and there. Uh, but one of the most iconic scenes is when he pulls out of the hotel or whatever it was and does that smoke show up the road. And the bike just looks awesome doing it. And then he does the high speed uh, highway uh, race or whatever. He's just going, getting on and on the highway and going real fast. And I love that scene. And he wipes out. <coughs> um, and then he, in the beginning of the movie, he's at the diner eating and he doesn't hear what's going on. And there's a big chase and they all go by the diner and he runs out and takes off and does this whip the tail of the bike around and it has this awesome fairing um, and seat looking fin thing. Love that bike. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so um, a guy that I that lives nearby, he, he helped me with a lot of the Z1R stuff, some consultation. He also painted the Z1R. Um, actually, I have, to get, I have to see whether or not he wants his name revealed. He does some restoration work. <coughs> but uh, in any case, um, in this episode, we bring the bike up to his place. And he had, when he, he made a goose bike, one of these goose bikes, a replica. And when he did that, he bought two sets of everything. He bought two exhausts. The exhaust has that crossover uh, pattern. It's really neat looking. And the fairing is very distinct. And he bought the fairing. And the fairing came from the company that made the original fairings for the movie. It came from Australia. Apparently, the, the original company went out of business. And somebody bought the molds. And those were in the middle of Australia, in the middle of nowhere. And he somehow got the guy on the... Tracked the guy down who owned the molds. And they ran off a couple more sets. So this is like the, the last two sets. So 12 years ago, I think he made a goose bike. And now we're making this other one and he's helping me. And so I brought, up, brought the bike up to his place and he fabricated all of the <coughs> um, brackets to mount the fairing. Didn't, the set doesn't come with any, any mounts. So you have to make everything. And I don't know how to fabricate. And he does. So he, he did all of that part. There's not a lot of footage from that part. Um, <clears throat> I, I was just up there as a guest and we were really focused. Um, that was that was between Christmas and New Year, New Year's of 2022. Um, so yeah, you know, about a year and five months ago or so, a year and four months ago. Uh, right now it's March, end of March, 2024. Uh, you also notice that <laughs> In the video, I'm quite a bit heavier, probably about 50, 60 pounds heavier. Um, okay, so so yeah, so yeah, it's a little it's a little boring, I think. Um, again, fabrication stuff, and I'm just kind of fitting pieces on the bike, and uh, I spend a lot of time trying to get the handlebars to fit with the fairing. Um, <clears throat> in the end, even what even what I show. I even kept fiddling with it after. Uh, I think, I don't know if I have the footage for that. Anyway, this isn't all of the footage from the, uh, trying to get the fairing to fit properly. Uh, it got too long, the video got too long, so I cut it off for like an hour. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy the episode. See ya. It doesn't want to go on because this, for the stock brake, brake lever, 
is a stop. And you can see there's a cutout for the tab to go in so you don't have to cut the tab off the frame. But we're going to take that bolt out. Is this bolt going to come out or is it going to hit the swing arm bolt? They wouldn't have done that to me, would they? Oh, come on. Ah! Whew. Okay, good. All right, and then you go on like that. There we go. That's how it's supposed to go. And let's go on there. Etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. This thing goes in here. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the rod that goes in there. I think on three different KZ-1000s, yeah, two KZ-1000As that I have, I, and the Z1R, I don't have that rod, and there's like none available on eBay. Come on. Very tight, tight fit. This one was a super tight fit. Also, this pivot point here. So then, <clears throat> drill it out just a little bit, hog it out. Yep. <clears throat> okay. This so little clip that goes here. <clears throat> okay, so that's that. You can always adjust it later. Alright, so that's the brake. Now we're going to do the shifter. I have to say, I like these sets. Um, I like it with it comes with everything you need. I really like that. Every nut and bolt, um, even the little push rods. I was saying that the brake, rear brake, mass cylinder push rod is missing. It's in there, so I got to put that in. Even comes with a new spring to pull down the uh, uh, brake light switch. All right, so this part appears to go like. 
that? Or is it like that? Hmm. I'm not sure how that goes. All right. Well, we'll leave that off for a moment. Let's see. So this thing just goes in here. There's a lot of adjustments. So this rod you can adjust. You can make it longer or you can make it shorter. Um, I think in order to get your feet, your foot in here, this thing can't be too low. Let's try, try it like this. go through and it goes through that one good low the pin has a bevel on it it should just go in there we go smash it okay there you go. See that hits. I don't like that. <clears throat> it could be that it's too it could be too low. Yeah, it looks looks too low. Let's put it on. Uh, you can't so you can't back this up too much because this head uh, runs out of action. clip in the back of here. You need a... <clears throat> uh, 10 millimeter. So if this is too low, this looks a little low, I think. How can I fix that? Make the make it shorter? Uh, that's all the way in. That's that's as short as the bar is gonna get. So I think there is where it's gonna have to go. And I have to place this on the outer edge <coughs> of the shift shaft. And that's not a 10. Come on, Italians. What are you doing? Japanese bikes, they love 10, 12, 14, occasional 13, 17. It's an 11. Who makes 11 millimeter bolts? hear it hit. Uh, then again, I don't really have all the bolts in. No, it's not hidden. It's, that's the stop. It's okay. Uh, up. Well, I'm, I'm not going to have the correct action because it's disconnected inside, but that's good enough. Let's see, how does this do? That hits it, so I'll have to figure out something for that. Maybe a stop of some kind. <clears throat> so 
So as I was saying, uh, I found the, the bar, the actuator bar for the master cylinder. This is the master cylinder. Bar goes in up here and it pushes in. Ah, and uh, that's how you apply your brakes. Okay. And this is way too short. And there's some adjustment. Not a lot, not that much. It could be that the master cylinder is is already compressed and it's frozen. You never know. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> so I mean that obviously doesn't work, and it's also hitting the frame. So, that's not good. <clears throat> well, I don't really need to figure that out right now. I'll have to rebuild. I'm going to rebuild the mass cylinder anyway. I don't know if it's frozen or not. Or, uh, yeah, like this is the Z1R kit. Maybe there's a different rod for the. Uh, Non Z1R, maybe. I'm kind of curious if, uh, if the master is frozen. I don't really have a way to push on it. Ah. <clears throat> I don't. I'll have to figure that out right now. This is close enough. So the fabrication that's going to be done eliminates these ears that hold the headlight bucket on. You can see how the turn signals mount through the headlight bucket and are secured inside there. And they mount to the forks with these ears. So these ears have to come off. This has to all come off. Uh, the only way to get the ears out is to pull the fork down and to take them out. So I'm going to take the front wheel off, I'll have to take the brakes off, and then I can get at the headlight. Um, th then I can take the headlight off and then I can get at the ears. Somebody was doing some soldering in here. Okay, uh, what's next? fork seals or it's possibly from a break although I don't see any real oil coming on the, from the break there's a bunch of oil residue all over here fender has to come off in order to drop the forks
not ruin these. taking the top of the triple tree off or but loosen it. So we get this cup, it's going to sit on top of the cup, and then yeah, I think a piece of rubber and a piece of like a little chrome thingy was under the cup, the cup sits on top of that thing. And then there's another little chrome collar that was on the top of this. <sighs> okay. People it's are gonna, all Kevlar. People are going to know what that, that was is. Cutting, that was cutting edge back then. You can see the dead panel. The oh, that's that right there? Yeah, the dash panel, we're going to make a... It's going to be painted flat black, but we're going to make it magnetically attached. Yeah. It's out of the window. <laughs> You're never going to blow out of there. And you you make the choice if you want to. Oh, your video. Yeah. Oh, you make the choice if you want to. Uh, if you want that fiberglass seat, they're just so flimsy. Uh, no, I like your idea. Okay. I brought two seats, okay, so you okay. can choose. Um, one's actually has like a chrome base to it. Yeah. And is more like an L, like an old fashioned Z nine hundred seat. Yeah. Yeah. The other one's the crappy uh, Z1 Classic seat, real cushiony. Oh, is it okay? Yeah, but we could use the plate out of it, I think. All right. Well I'm gonna get this fender lined up here. A fender, a fairing. 
You said originally this was ba built for an inline four? Inline four, yeah. Gotta fabricate all these brackets. Get closer. <laughs> it's a... Uh... Well, we got the bottom fitted. Double bracket here, attached at two points, and then <laughs> with two stop dog. And these are reinforced, and then a big one on each side to hold it. I mean, this thing is solid. Stop licking me. <laughs> you're, so, you're so cute. <laughs> All right, don't, don't lift the camera. And then a uh, large sub with a large Italian sub. So you got this reinforcement bar here, and that takes care of the windshield from flooding around. Is that what it does? Yeah. And then we'll have another one there. And the headlight's gonna mount in here, obviously, on some tags. So this is the fairing support. We started here, and you set, set this up. On the bottom, screwed in, bolted in, then made these two ears with this this bar make like a rectangle. This is all the. It's going to support the headlight here, and then a piece of half inch square tubing with a slice in it to bend it on both sides. Right. Got a flange here really rugged you put these gussets in Looking good Guess what it is now? <laughs> Getting closer. Put the turn signals on. Get the exhaust in the pictures. Do a photo of your hand, don't worry. Alright. Starting to look like more like it. So the original bike would not have had this, right? This is your. Kind uh, of I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's hard to say in the movie because the seat does flip up in one of the accidents. This seat pan for the goose bike. It's the original seat for the KZ1000 G model. 
C1 Classic that's under there, and it's been cut and modified to have a little bit of like a cafe racer look to it. <clears throat> so, it's pretty crusty, and I'm going to vapor blast it. We'll see how that turns out. Well, I, uh, I have found a big downside to the uh, vapor honer. If you do steel, you get flash rusting. So I got this thing completely unrusted and uh, there was seat glue on there. That was the worst part. The, the rust came off. The seat glue took forever. Um, so I don't know how well you can see it. But anyway, by the time it was done, going all the way around with everything, <coughs> um, it had uh, flash rusted, so then I had to go around again. I think it took two hours to get it all around, and then another 10 minutes getting the flash rust off. And I knew it was just gonna flash rust again, so I dumped it in evapo rust. That's like five gallons of evapo rust that I used to clean old gas tanks. Um, and we'll see. Yeah, there's still some goop on there. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm going to clean it off, and then I think I'm going to prime it. Again, the edge is not seen. That's going to be covered with seat material. The only part that's going to be seen is this underside when you flip it up on the bike. So the only real rot that's going to be, that would be visible, is this area right here. But there's a support that goes on here. That's where the bracket is that locks the seat, the seat lock. So you won't even see that. So I think I've got lucky here. And I'm going to be able to use this. Repeat. Yummy. Well, uh, the, so what am I working on? The goose bike. If you haven't figured it out by now, if I haven't said it already, I am trying to create. <clears throat> a uh, reproduction of the Goose's bike in the movie Mad Max. You don't really get to see too much of it, but the couple of scenes that you get to see, uh, the opening chase sequence, um, you see the, the bike, you see him fly off, you get a nice close-up of the bike, it's really interesting looking. And then, of course, the legendary burnout that he does. <clears throat> so, we did the uh, the fabrication, roughly, um, and we need to do, I need to do some more here. Need to do some cleanup work. We were kind of under the gun for time. Um, and so I have a list of things that need to be done. One thing that has to be done, if you can see, maybe I'll look from the back, is that if you look at it from the back, can you see how the windscreen is cocked? to one side, it's like high up there. It looks kind of normal over here. Well, that's because, it's <laughs> that's because of, of some reason. It looks to me like the whole, that whole brace is kind of cocked to the left. <clears throat> but that could just be, I don't know, these, this, is, this is about equal with this. This is mounted a little bit lower. Anyway, I have to work on this, and I'm not sure really what I'm going to be able to do with it. Um, so I got to play with that. I got a whole laundry list here. Let's see. Fixed tail light alignment, the tail, the tail fin, <coughs> that really neat looking fin. Put that on so you can see. Nice. Nice and level at the front, but in the back, 
it's not. See, it's cocked. If you look at it like this, you see it. So, basically, this part needs to come down. And I suspect that what I'll be doing is basically doing something there. Or can I bring this part up? I can't really bring this part up too much. Maybe, maybe a little bit. Maybe I can bring that up a little bit. Bring this down a little bit. The front seems fine. It's this back part. So anyway, I gotta do something with that. I have to check the alignment of this thing. Um, this is a fender eliminator kit. <clears throat> Should be able to do something with this to get my um, license plate in there. Hopefully, we'll see. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it goes. Like there, this is, a, this is the mount for the original fender. You can see it here. There's four bolts that go in there. I believe these four bolts go here. So I can clean this up and mount that there and then I'll have a good place to put my license plate. Because yes, I will put it on the road. Tail light license plate, adjust the seat pan. I already did that. That went out to have a custom seat made for it. Trim the fairing. So yeah, like I gotta, um, I can't really turn it right now, but I'll show it before I do it. If you turn, if you turn the, the steering, the forks run into the sides of the fairing on both, both inside pieces. So that has to be trimmed. It's too, too fat over here. So that has to be fixed up. Uh, down there, for instance, you can see the exhaust pipe is hitting the inside of the fairing, so I need to take some off of that. I need to get, uh, I need to cut out the sliver in between and make some, make me make some plates so that can be uh, um, installed, uninstalled. It'd be nice to take, be able to take the fairing off, you know, side by side. Right now, it's difficult as one piece. It's really difficult to manage it with one person. <coughs> I'm gonna clearance over here. Okay, so there's that. Mount to dash. Okay, so the dash is this thing. And you can see here that we didn't really <laughs> take this into consideration. Um, so it's like these wings need to be spread out of it. doesn't fit really like that. I'm not really sure what to do with this. Do I cut it? Um, it was suggested that I cut it on that black mark and wedge it in there, but I think I'm gonna try to widen out the, this frame, spread it out a bit, because it, I think it is closed in a little too much. Um, what else do I have? Try to fix the windscreen. I already talked about that. And then another thing which I didn't say is you can see the handlebars are cocked upward. Well, that's because if you try to turn the steering wheel, uh, the steering, the bars, the, the controls will hit the fender, uh, the fender, the fairing. So we already trimmed a little bit off of each side. I don't want to trim too much more because it, it, that really is part of the look of it. You can't really see the sharp lines right now because it's got so much dust on it. But uh, I got some risers. And let's see if I can use the riser to pull the, the whole steering up just a little bit. <clears throat> I think I talked about it when I played with the forks, but these fork cap bolts are in the way with these, these are drag bars, right? So the, normally your bar would come up and go off like this. You, they'd be rise out of them anyway. Um, but the Goose Bike has drag bars on it. 
and uh, I think I'm going to need a little bit of a rise, pull it up, and then I'll be able to turn the steering properly and have these pointed backwards. As you can see, they're pointed up. We were just playing around trying to see if there's an angle we could come up where it would clear the fairing properly. Uh, what else? Well, I think that's good enough for now. This is a brand new reproduction gas tank for uh, KZ900 in the early KZ1000, which this is, this is a 77. <coughs> and I mounted it to make sure it cleared the seat that I had here. Uh, so I got plenty of stuff to do, and uh, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Looking at this Allen head uh, bolt sticking out of there, and I'm saying it, it came with these ones, which have a recess. So why not use them? say they weigh off, I mean the alignment between the two sides. I'm looking in here. <clears throat> you can see these marks here. Now, ideally those marks would line up inside, but uh, this is what I have. I just want to make sure the distance is about equal. Let's try that. The fairing needs to be trimmed. I'm just getting the fairing here, and uh, it starts hitting the fairing here. It's hitting the electrical plate. So that's the that's the front brake line, actually. That's uh, getting turned away. stop, a metal stop at the bottom. This is the stop that limits your travel from side to side. So regardless of what you do, when it hits that, you're out of travel. So if I go like this, so it's a tiny bit. Can you see that? Let's see. See 
this little ear thing and this thing here. Right, so when it hits that, well done. So it's hitting the fairing over there. So I, I'll clearance that a little bit and I think I can get the rest of that. Now when I come over this side, you can see here that the front brake line is pointing up and it's mounted on this little bracket here. So you can see, we go to the right, uh, excuse me, the left, see how it starts bending? Depends how far away am I here. But I'm a good distance away. Again, I don't know if the camera's picking this up, I'm gonna hope so. <coughs> so let me get that brake line out of the way and do a little bit of a trim right in here. Just needs a little bit to get out of the way on both sides. Uh, yeah, let me try that. Okay, so I think I want to trim something like this. Try that. It looks like it would be a good sweep. Give this drill. I'm gonna make some noise. But uh, that's why they make sanders. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so clearance on the fork is fine, but I'm hitting over here again. Uh, hmm, let's see. Do I lower it? How do I do this? <clears throat> well, let me see how far away I am on the stop. The stop is microscopically. <laughs> I'm hitting the brake cable. Uh, it goes so far over that it stops the front brake. So I can adjust that. Maybe by moving it forward. I don't think that's going to work in reality. <coughs> but now the hand grip's hitting the fairing. I think I just heard it stop on the stop. No, it's not stopped on the stop. It's stopped on the fairing. <clears throat> and if the handlebars were a little bit lower, that wouldn't be a problem. So let me try putting the handlebars back down and see what happens. I think when they're back down, this is going to hit. Oh, the handlebars can go in. Okay, let's try that. The handlebars can go in. The throttle thingy can go in a little bit. Oops. Uh, yeah. Can you tell I'm not Mr. Tripod? Uh, it's, it's still hitting. But man, it's right, it's right there. Let me try lowering them down. Let's take a look at how that looks if I lower, lower the handlebars back down. All right, well, I, I lowered it back down and the handlebar Oh, it's impacting, but it's impacting because it moved. Okay, it moved. So, jam it over here. Let's try that. Okay. Let's 
Excuse me. So that. Okay. Are we on the stop? No. We're on the we're on that brake cable again. The brake line again. Okay. Now we're hitting. It's hitting. Uh, I keep I'm gonna have to do something about that brake cable. Get like a really long one or something. I don't know. It has to stay out of the way of the forks. Maybe I can mount that bracket somewhere else. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I don't know if you can see. So let's see. Let me get that out of the way. So I'm over here and how close is it? When I say how close is it, I'm saying how close is it to the stop? There's the stop. Okay, so it's on the stop right there. So, <clears throat> in a pinch, you can get... Let's take a look at this together. You see, the most bowed out is right in here. So it, the handlebars swing up as the forks turn. Up, 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 and now they're, they're up here. If I have them on the risers, then it hits here. So it's better without the riser. Um, so, what, so what can I do? Uh, what if I turn the handlebars down a little bit, would that do it? See, right now these th throttle uh, cables, they're not touching, so that's good. Now I turn to the right, so I gotta make that same cut over here. You can see how I'm turning it, that's what I keep talking about, the front brake uh, line is, is getting caught right like that. So that has to be repositioned somehow. Maybe I can mount this somewhere else somehow. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. All right, let me try turning them down a little bit. Okay, so I turned the handlebars down just a smidge. And actually, it doesn't really look like I turned them down at all. They're kind of equal with the plane of the floor, I think. So now, listen. Hear that? That's the stop. So we got all the travel out of the left side. Uh, it occurs to me I gotta put the gas tank on because I don't know whether that's gonna clear the gas tank. Very well may not. So it may not even matter. Okay, so now I can't turn it to the right because of that uh, the fairing is contacting, so I gotta make that cut over there. Okay, I can feel it hitting the stop. It's also the um, the end of the handlebar over here. I guess you can't see what I'm talking about. So if you watch, so I got the clutch lever is going to be out like that. So that's going to hit. I need to move that in a little bit. So it does just barely start to hit the uh, grip, but I can hear the, I can hear I'm hitting the stop. So we got full travel. My hook up my crook. I think this thing can go. 
there. You can get shorter um, levers, and you can also get the, the levers that are like dirt bike levers. They come in a little bit with the grip. I'm not sure what was on the original bike. Uh, but it looks like I can get away without using the risers. I also ordered this, uh, you can get a little bit of rise and set back. So it's like you can pull them up and back a little bit, and that really may create more um, space, but then again, I'm thinking, you know, the gas tank is like wedged in here. So let's take a look. I've got my full travel, pretty much. That's not hitting the stop, that's hitting the uh, brace, the front fairing brace. It's almost hitting the stop, but not quite. <coughs> um, get some more room here. Well, I'm going to fiddle with this a bit. <coughs> so I filled with it a bunch, and I took out the... Uh, there's two throttle cables, one's the pull, one's the push. The push one is only used in an emergency if the carburetor throttle spring breaks. The tendency would be for it to go wide open. And uh, that's in the, so if you, carburetor spring, I don't wanna get into it, but anyway, you don't need that second one um, necessarily. If you go over here, throttle cable, is just touching the tank as it's run out of travel on this side. And I can fiddle with moving that like that, but then it hits fairing. So I can't really really do that. Uh, there might be shorter ones of these available. As a matter of fact, uh, ones I have upstairs, maybe they would, f maybe they are shorter, the, uh, like, you know, the replacement ones that aren't like the stock. This is probably a stock cable. It's no good. I can't use it anyway. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, so I'm kind of running into this issue. I mean, one little bang on the brand new paint job and putting a dent, you know, a mark in the paint, it's gonna be game over. So then I'm tempted to put it back up on the riser. So let me try that. So I put the risers back in and that takes care of the tank issue, but it really takes care of it by limiting the travel because the throttle, the, not the throttle, the, uh, the left grip bumps earlier than it would if it was not on the riser. So it doesn't get close enough the throttle housing doesn't get close enough to bump into the gas tank. <clears throat> and if I have my hand in here and I'm trying to move all the way over, you know, there's no space over my hand. And on this side, it's kind of the same story. Now this one goes over a lot more. Um, and you would only go over this much if you're taking it, you know, if you're making a really tight turn, probably when you're turning around or, you know, not going fast. <clears throat> but I, I don't hit the bump. I don't, I'm not hitting the stop. Here I'm hitting the brake again. Okay. So it's, 
I know this one is real close. Yeah, that one's real close to hitting the stop. How about here? Can we see it? Uh, you can't really see it. Oh, oops, I put the camera like this. Can you see it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, but there it is. It's hitting the stop. It's not really hitting the stop, but it's damn close. Yeah, it's hitting the stop. I'm pushing on it and I can feel it. So that's that's all the travel right there. So if if I was just to slice off a little more of this, uh, well, my hand's not going to get in there. There's no way my hand's going to get in there. And there's going to be a vinyl strip around the edges. But that would crunch your hand. Mm. I don't think it's going to work without the risers. Because it just gets too close to the tank. I don't know how the movie bike was working. But I think this one's going to have risers. <laughs> well, that's all I'm going to do with that one for now. So I looked, looked in my stash upstairs. This is the new cable for the Z1R project. And you can see, you know, it's less than half the length of that chrome, chrome piece there. The chrome looks nice, but... Uh, Oh, that's great. Um, you know, uh, I have to sacrifice having a chrome one. That, that one's garbage anyway. And uh, this is what they're selling for replacements. So let me try this one without the risers. Okay, well, I think I've got the combination that I'm going to go with anyway. Um, put the riser out. Turn to the left. I put the speedo in because the bolts uh, and the wires, they you know, they have to consider those also. So if I turn to the left, okay. It's hitting. The speedo is hitting. It was. Let's see, if it's bolted all the way in and it's sitting up like it should be. Okay, it doesn't hit. Well, I may need to be putting some washers on that or something, having that stand up a little bit prouder. I also have this thing. So it can't be up too high. Okay, that's not bad. So I have the risers out. Am I hitting? Okay. The brake hose is hitting that central um, bar because I moved it. <laughs> Boy, this is a real jigsaw puzzle. Speedo. So that clears fine. Okay. Alright, so now now I can get the tack in because Tack cable would hit the, the front brake line. Stand it up straight. How does that going to work? Okay, the 
works. <laughs> so that, yeah, this, that's the back of the tack hitting this cross, this cross member for the front subframe that holds the fairing. So of course I can't have that. So that that's gonna have to come up a little bit on some washers or something, and then it can clear. Okay. So move that a little bit. Move it a little bit. Can't move it anymore. I'm gonna have to get different levers. I think it needs like dirt bike levers. <coughs> About over over there, my hand can get in. I hope you can see some of this. Relocate. So we can turn to the left with my hand in there. I have to get a different lever. stop and I don't hit the gas tank with the throttle uh, the, the whole the uh, kill switch start button control thingy throttle housing uh, okay so that's where the throttle that's where the speedo attack should be. And if they're there, it's okay. I think, I think when they're bolted in, those would be okay. <clears throat> I gotta come up with something for... the front brake line. I don't think I need to get new levers. Well, I fiddled and fiddled and fiddled with the handlebars, trying to get, you know, if you turn it all the way, trying to get all of the steering from stop to stop, the mechanical stop down the bottom there. Um, you know, without it hitting the tank. You can see right in, right here, I kind of, it's about the best I can do without the risers. And the, this, the handlebars are kind of angled up, I don't know if you can see. They're supposed to come back a little bit and basically be, you know, in line with that angle. But if you do that, it'll hit the gas tank over here. Uh, so these risers are an inch riser. And if you put the inch riser on, your hand smashes into this. So it's got good clearance away from the gas tank, so that's good. So normally this, this bike, you know, it would have... Uh, a normal handlebar that would kind of curve up and then go over. These are called drag bars where they want, I don't know why they do it, but yeah, I think it makes the steering action really quick. I don't know. I don't know exactly why they do it. Uh, but this is what the movie bike had. Is it had drag bars. <clears throat> so, without the risers, this is about as good as I can get it. It's, it's not great. You know, front brake hits over here. I can't really turn the front brake because it has this thing. Um, I could get a different front brake set up. I could get shorter levers. I kind of wanted to keep what it would have had, the movie bike would have had on it, which is the Kawasaki long levers with the ball on it. I might try bringing these to the machine shop and have them take a half inch off and so it would only be a half inch rise. Um, I think that might be good. So I'll keep playing with that, but for now that's, that's going to be good enough. Well, thank you for watching the episode. This is uh, part two of the Goose Bike. This is going to take about a year. Um, it's already been about a year. So we did all of this work fabricating the uh, mounts for the fairing and mounting the fairing. 
and I did some adjustments to it basically to get the fairing ready to paint and uh, then I took the bike uh, that was again that was about a year ago took the bike I got it out of the way put it threw it out in the shed and I continued work on the on the Z1R project um, what is it right what is the state of the bike right at the moment I'll just leave that for the next episode um, so then the, the next episode to come I'll finish working on uh, the body set stuff and, uh, and then we'll see what happens from there but uh, I'm a, if it was a little slow that's just part of what this is you know it's got it's restoration of these old motorcycles it's kind of slow and tedious I don't know if you want to watch the whole thing or not watch it if you like <laughs> if, you, if you did like it please like and subscribe um, I'd like to hit a thousand subscribers at some point that would be cool um, but I think the likes help it so if you, if, if you happen to remember hit the like button Anyway, thank you for tuning in, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.